Coming up in 15 minutes, Steve Becker is looking for ghosties and ghoulies. Good morning, Graham. I'm at the Grapevine... Sorry about that. I didn't, should have warned you how spooky I would be, and that's just without trying. I'm at the Grapevine pub in Polton, where a team of paranormal investigators have just emerged, and they've just switched the lights on and opened the pub, after a nighttime session investigating hauntings, reputations of evil and strange and ghostly goings on here. Very briefly, Gaz Coward has led the team of paranormal investigators. You're saying, Gaz, as we switched the lights on this morning, something happened overnight, yes? Oh. Yes, that is, that is true, yes. Give what? us a very brief hint. Oh. Possession? Oh. That is all I'm going to say. Oh, but... my word, Graham. Uh, I'm, I'm spooked. Oh. I'm sure you are. We will reveal all in about 20 minutes did here they find, from the pub. Did they find some spirits? Uh, <laughs> plenty of them here at the station. Oh. BBC Radio Lancashire. Oh, 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 oh. Well, there we are. Ghosties and ghoulies. Five minutes to eight o'clock. It's BBC Radio Lancashire. It's Graham at breakfast. Now, if you are of a nervous disposition, turn your ears off now. Oh. Because we're ghost hunting. Our reporter, Steve Becker, if you were listening earlier, you'll know that Steve Becker is at a pub in Poulton where a team of paranormal investigators have just emerged after being locked in all night. Steve, <laughs> what have they found out? Good morning, Graham. Oh, my God, you sound crazy. Go <laughs> Ghosties and ghoulies in the grapevine, or not, as the case may be. Now, uh, Abby and Darren Woodcock took over the pub six years ago. Good morning, Abby. Morning. When you arrived, you quickly found it had a reputation for strange goings-on, uh, reports of a couple of people having committed suicide here, and then you too yourself, or I might say, is it the power of persuasion, had some unexplained goings-on. Give, give us an example. I think one was with your daughter. Um, yeah, there's always been a few things that have kind of happened, but it's, you know, you do kind of explain them away. But one of the strangest things that happened when we first took over was um, my children at the time were three and four. And quite frequently, they used to, if I was working during the day in the bar, they would go up to the top floor um, and talk away to each other, which was, you know, absolutely fine. I could hear them chatting away. And then my little boy one day was at nursery, so I picked up my daughter from school. She'd just started reception class. Um, and she said, can I go upstairs? And I said, yeah, that's fine. She went upstairs, and a couple of minutes later, she started talking away, and she carried on chatting away. And then eventually I went upstairs and I was like, who are you speaking to, sweetheart? She said, um, I'm, I'm talking to Katie, Mummy, the lady. I was like, right, that, that's good, yeah. And where's this lady? What, 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 where has she gone now? Oh, she's just disappeared now. But, um, yeah, I talk to her all the time. And I was like, OK, uh, where is she, though? Does she ever come when I'm here? And she was like, oh, no, Mummy, just really... Um, almost sort of just joking, laughing at me, going, oh, of course she doesn't come when you're here, Mum. Now, very briefly, that and other strange goings-on and noises and people being tapped on the head and so on and so forth, the power of persuasion or not, how much have you fallen victim to the pub's haunted reputation? I, I don't have any fears while I'm in here, I must say. I don't, um, I don't feel nervous around the building or anything else. Um, and I tend to just let everything go by me and if something happens then I will try to find an explanation out of it. Now I wonder if that will change because also with us is Gaz Coward from the team Paranormal Intent and you and a, a team of your colleagues just emerged this morning having been locked in here without Abby I should say uh, your advice overnight and when we spoke to you earlier on you used the word possession so yes. briefly what did you find what happened overnight here? Okay well uh, taking on board what uh, Abby told us in uh, an interview that we uh, carried out on Monday night. Uh, we always carry out interviews a couple of days before our investigation, so we have a good feel of what we are going up against. Now, Abby uh, went into detail and told us that somebody was hit over their head in the attic. And we thought, OK, we will uh, concentrate some of our investigation up there. When you hear that, first of all, someone was hit over the head, is that... Is that music to your ears? Are you looking for this kind of stuff? How much of, how much of this is, is delusion and, and I might even use the word hoax? Um, to be totally honest with you, uh, when we hear that someone's been hit over the head, we fear, we, it's not uncommon. You, you, spirits can build up a, a lot of energy that, where they can cause damage to a human being. Um, as for hoax, well... 
you can't really call it a hoax, you know what I mean? We, our tagline is, we're researching the unknown for a better understanding. Well, in, as part of that research, briefly, you've, you've videoed and filmed yeah. and you've had cameras up here where we are in the, in, near the attic now. You're going to then process that over the next few days. Yes or no, are you going to definitively be able to say, this was here and, and show Abby and everybody else something that was, is 100% foolproof? Um, I can't... I, well, I can't definitively say that, yes, this place is definitely haunted until I've reviewed that footage. Can you say that of anywhere? Because you know what's going to be happening. Thousands of people listening to you now all yeah. over Lancashire are going to be saying, that, you know, you won't mind me saying in these, these terms, this is bonkers. Mm. It's a complete load of rubbish. See, a lot of paranormal shows get that, OK? A lot of paranormal shows. There's many shows out there that you can watch and people will say, this is bogus, this is not real. But that's people that haven't experienced it. Oh. When you've been to a location such as the Grapevine and you have seen some, th some of the things like we saw last night, talking of the possession, you can't explain it. You can't, oh. you've just got to go with it. And you've... Graham, we'll have more on this at tea time. We're, 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 my goodness we'll find me. out what they saw, what Abby makes of it all, and uh, whether the Grapevine really has its own ghosts and ghouls. Oh dear, oh dear. More trouble from David a bit. Loving the Red Rose County. This is BBC Radio Lancashire. Yeah, in terms of the roads across the county, not much happening this morning. Anyway, when our school careers advisor asked us, and they did me, <laughs> what job we wanted to do, and they looked a funny way at me, I wonder how many of us actually replied then, uh, Ghost Hunter. Gaz Coward from The File does just that through his business uh, Paranormal Intent. He spent last night locked inside the Grapevine pub in Polton, The File, which has a haunted history, ready to record any strange activity. And when the landlady, Abby Woodcock, turned up this morning, he claimed that one of his team had experienced a possession. Abby had agreed to host the paranormal investigators because of some strange happenings that she and her family had experienced. Our reporter, Steve Becker, was there as the team emerged and asked Gaz first how he got into such an unusual job. It all stems back to our, um, my filmmaking career, in a way, because I lost my dad at 15. He passed away, and I was the one that found him, unfortunately. It's always been something on my mind. My first short film was In Memory of My Dad, and it seemed to touch people's hearts. So I thought, but what happens if he's still out there? What happens if he's watching over me or wants to make contact with me? So if I go and do some paranormal investigating, maybe I'll come face to face. I haven't come face to face with him yet, uh, but I still, I'm, I'm, I continue trying. So that's basically how I got into the whole paranormal. And in the meantime, with these investigations with paranormal intent, you're saying that you've come across other happenings, experiences, other what people out there. If not your, if not your family and your father, but you've had other encounters. Is that the best way of putting um, it? Yes, I've had a, I've had a lot of encounters from weird noises, knocks. Uh, I've been called so many names under the sun, which I can't name on the radio, by spirits from the other side, which we record via white noise. Now, Abby, hearing about all this, uh, Abby Woodcock, the landlady of the, uh, <laughs> the pub here, the Grapevine, when you invited the team in, you, what, expected something similar because of the reputation when you and your husband took over the pub six years ago? You'd heard about the hauntings, the goings-on, I think reports of people having killed themselves in the pub. <laughs> so, so what did you expect to happen, or perhaps why did you want the team to come in? Um, I, I don't really know if I expected anything, really. I just sort of... Um, it was actually one of our regular customers that um, asked if... Would it be possible for this team to come in and have a look round and we know the reputation of the place? And it seems like a lot, a lot more people in Polton actually know more of the reputation than I do, to be quite honest. So I just tend to go along my daily business and what happens, happens. But give us an example, because there are things that have gone on in the pub where, I mean, I might suggest maybe it's the, the power of persuasion or reputation, yeah. where you think they've been unexplained and then you've naturally thought back to the reputation of the place. Yeah. Um, my little girl used to talk to um, an unseen person on the top floor when she was about four years old. She used to hold conversations with this woman called Katie, um, and when I, was, when I asked her about it, um, she was basically saying, well, no, she doesn't come when you're around, Mummy. Why would she come when you're around? She only comes to see me and Ethan. And it's like, OK, that's fine. That's no problem at all. I'll leave you to it then. 
Um, but lots of other things have happened, really, that you do sort of end up just thinking, well, that could just be trick of the light, or that could be just, it's an old building, they all make noises. Um, my brother's been hit on the head up near the attic, which is where there was this if episode last night, from what I gather. Um, but my brother has been hit on the back of the head up in that area as well, which was a bit strange, because um, he's very down-to-earth. He's not really into what he would possibly call mumbo-jumbo, all that nonsense. He's oh, well, now, when you say when you say the phrase mumbo-jumbo, yeah. I mean, th there's going to be so many people who say you, yeah. you're deluding yourself, and Gaz is going to be yeah, people definitely. to say you're... I know, taking advantage of people's susceptibility, it's a hoax, it's, it's a load of bunkum. Is there any evidence? I know you take cameras, you take recording equipment. Could you, could you, for instance, show Abby what happened here last night and definitively, and show me, yes, here's something, it's on film, it's on tape, and it's unequivocally unaccountable? I can do in a few days. Not now, because we've got to transfer it to all our servers to get edited. But my tagline for the team is that we are researching the unknown for a better understanding. We don't just go hunting these ghosts thinking, oh, yeah, come and make some knocks for us. We analyse that footage, we break it down, we break down the audio and we decipher what messages are coming across from the other side. And do you think you'll be able to be convinced, Abby, when you see whatever it is they've recorded in your pub last night? I'd like to be convinced. I would, because um, I do believe there is an afterlife, but I do believe in spirits, I think. Um, but I'm just, as I said, I'm just very open-minded to everything. I'm, I don't say yes, I don't say no. It's just, look, whatever happens, happens. Spooky.